There's a famous joke about three Jewish women who are each bragging about whose son honors her the most. The first one says, my son honors me so much that last year he bought me a ticket to a cruise to the Bahamas. It was fantastic. I got to relax and enjoy. It was really amazing, and it's nice to see what a son I have. The second woman says, oh, my son, he bought me a Cadillac, a beautiful car I can drive around now, and it really helps me a lot. The third said, ah, that's nothing. My son goes every single week to a psychoanalyst on Park Avenue, and he pays $500 an hour to talk just about me. Of course, as Jews, we love to analyze and psychoanalyze. And interestingly, the last person for Sigmund Freud to ever psychoanalyze was Moses. In 1938, as Freud was being sort of shuttled out of Vienna, where he refused to leave for a long time despite the rise of the Nazi movement, uh, Freud published a book about Moses. In his book, Mo uh, Freud claims that uh, Moses could not have been Jewish. Why? <clears throat> because it makes no sense. Who would have been born into royalty, into the palace of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and then switch sides to go and be with the Jews uh, and, and uh, be on the oppressed side? It makes no sense. Who would possibly go from the side of glory and wealth and comfort and prosperity, despite being born into the slave nation, and go back to the slave nation. So he concluded it can't be that he was Jewish, because which Jew would switch out of that kind of comfort? Interestingly, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, the chief rabbi of the UK, uses the same tools that Freud discovered in order to analyze him. And he says that what Freud was saying was actually a projection. Freud was projecting and saying that if he would have been in that situation where he could have belonged to the powerful and master culture, he never would have chosen to affiliate with the weaker, more oppressed Jewish people. And in fact, that's what happened during the late, day, uh, late life of Freud, where he refused to recognize what the German and Austrian society was going through and uh, he, he hardly wanted to side with the Jews uh, and therefore was very reluctant to leave. But why was Freud wrong? Why was it that it, Moses was actually part of the Jewish people? And the answer is uh, it, Moses became a leader exactly for the reason Freud said, because if you're able to look at an oppressed people, at an enslaved people, and despite coming from the palace of Pharaoh, despite coming from extraordinary wealth and power, you choose to go with what is right over the might, then you are a true leader. If you're able to see the suffering of others, Vayar Besivlotam, Moses is able to see the pain of the Jews. The rabbis say what got Moses chosen was the character of Nosebe Olim Chavero, being able to shoulder the burden with your friend who's suffering, being able to see the pain of another person and share in that burden and participate in their pain. And despite your comfort, to recognize that the person who's on the other side and suffering is not that different than you. That is exactly why Moses was, was chosen. In fact, commentaries from Ramban to the Malbim elaborate about the fact that Moses didn't switch line, uh, didn't cross over party lines, so to speak, once, but he did it twice. When Moses first went from the palace of Pharaoh to the Jewish people and he joined them, and secondly, when Moses was living already in Midian with his wife Tzipora, and he was sort of out of all of the uh, all of the difficulties and challenges of Egypt, he was not an Egyptian and nor a Jew. He was able to just live in Midian without any uh, uh, involvement in this this uh, 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 difficult situation of the Jews in Egypt. Nonetheless, Moses chooses, obviously after the revelation of the burning bush. But Moses chooses to return to B'nai Israel and therefore becomes the savior of the Jewish people because he's able to go away from what's comfortable for him and share in the pain of others. He's no sebe olim chavero. He sees the pain of others despite being on a side of comfort. So often we see difficult situations and we wonder, should we really get involved? And the answer from Moses is, don't hesitate to go over what is right 
and never choose something just because of its might. Sometimes it's difficult to be on the side that's being oppressed, but nonetheless, if it's the right side, if it's the side of justice, if, if it's the side of Hashem, then you should choose that path. The lesson of Moses is a lesson of nosebe olim chavero. It's a lesson of caring for others, and it's a lesson of Moses being chosen exactly for the reason that Freud thought he would never be chosen uh, and never be part of the Jewish people. Namely, he would never cross from the uh, comfortable side, the mighty side, to the weak and oppressed side. As Jews, we often endure persecution, but that doesn't change our mind. That doesn't change our determination. That doesn't change our resolution to go with what is right. No matter what, no one can deter us from pursuing the path of pride, the path of being part of Am Yisrael. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom.